Julie Martin of the Weather Channel is tracking these storms. Julie, what's the latest? A couple of dangerous days ahead. We'll see these storms get better organized and push through Minnesota this evening. But by tomorrow, we're looking at as many as 50 million people under the gun for hail, damaging winds, and tornadoes. It is 50 past the hour in time now for your tropical update. You're taking a look here at the U.S. And while it looks like there is a whole lot of action going on in the tropics, none of it is really going to impact us a whole lot. So I want to start with the newest thing, and that is this invest. 93L. It's right off the coast of Texas, about 90 miles out. Look at this. Kansas City, about 20 degrees below average. Now, we could be seeing some major records set over the next couple of days. Temperatures, though, will be the big story tomorrow, as I mentioned. We are looking at some <laughs> uncharted territory here in some cases. Look at this tomorrow. Dallas expected to hit 81 degrees, 71 in Louisville, 69 in Chicago. And if you'll zoom in here on this cell, you can see how it is really just exploding. Maybe you're traveling. Going to have some weather to contend with here in the southeast and in the northeast. And this pattern going to be sticking around just basically showers and thunderstorms for most of this part of the country over the next several days. All right, we're going to get a look at the next seven days of weather. We'll send it back to Julie Martin in Atlanta. Good morning, Julie. Good morning, guys. What a sweet story. Uh, kudos to that guy. All right, let's take a look at the forecast then. For today, we're still dealing with some wet weather in the Midwest, also in the south in the four corners. Nice conditions, though, from Boston in through New York City. You're looking pretty in the 80s. Tomorrow, we'll see a severe weather threat, though, ramp up as we move throughout the day. This one's stretching through the Ohio River Valley, so we're looking at the possibility of hail and damaging winds here. Should be pretty nice elsewhere across the country, though, for tomorrow. Maybe a little bit of wet weather in Florida on tap. By Sunday, the storms reach all the way into the east now. Boston, New York, D.C. all getting wet. And Monday, it looks like a wet start to the week as well. But, Alan Jen, as you know, the big story, the cool down coming your way. This is the kind of rain that can wash little Julie Martin away. Oh. <laughs> Julie, <laughs> how's it going today? Because I know when I was on those roads early this morning already, standing water in the middle of those interstates causes trouble. So how's it going this morning? Yeah, oh, it's going great out here, Sam. <laughs> it's a lovely Monday morning. Just beginning to feel the effects on North Carolina's outer banks. Weather Channel meteorologist Julie Martin joins us now from Nags Head. Julie, how are things there? Well, good evening, Lester. Things are definitely deteriorating here in Nags Head. We're getting lashed with some of those outer rain bands from Sandy, even though it is still well offshore from the Carolinas and to my south. Just goes to show you the size and the strength of this storm. The Weather Channel's Julie Martin joins us now from Virginia Beach, Virginia, with the latest. Julie, good evening. And good evening to you, Lester. This storm being blamed for at least six deaths tonight after leaving behind a path of destruction more than 300 miles long and major coastal flooding. Good evening, Lester. You know, it will be a cold week for millions. As Michelle mentioned, a couple of Arctic blasts are moving in from Canada. We can expect more record lows, stormy weather, maybe even some snow again by late week. And here you can see some of the damage, a true testament to the power of water. This building knocked completely off of its foundation. I mean, we're talking bricks and mortar here. All of this from a nearby creek on the other side of the building that is a fairly shallow creek. I'm told the water came up to about here, and you can see the devastation as a result. I'm cool. And I'm Julie Martin. You know, from next week's big cool down to a mystery above, there is a lot happening this half hour. A lot. It's going to be a busy morning. No Absolutely. <laughs> We're going to get you out now in front of today's top weather stories. Puerto Rico already seeing periods of heavy rain. Joining us now live on the phone is Amaryllis Coto with the National Weather Service in San Juan. Amaryllis, thank you so much for joining us. Can you describe conditions right now? Julie Martin is live in D.C. for us today at the White House. Julie, give us the latest that you found. Well, you know, Vivian, it's interesting when you look back just over the past week, we've had everything from killer tornadoes to historic flooding to now wildfires and a heat wave. All of those issues really outlined and highlighted in this new climate report that is coming out later on this afternoon here in Washington, D.C. We devoted a lot of time here this week to the wild temperature extremes in our country, rising and falling 50 degrees or more, and now we are paying the price in terms of violent weather. Lots of damage, lots of accidents. Our report tonight on all of it from Weather Channel meteorologist Julie Martin. In Michigan this morning, blinding snow caused a deadly chain reaction accident nearly a mile long on I-75 near Detroit. 
At least three people were killed and several injured. There was a whiteout condition, and once the first crash happened, uh, other people couldn't see the, the actually see out from the hood of their vehicle. Hours later, another in Michigan and a dozen vehicle pile up in Indiana. In Maryland, water rescues caught on tape. Firefighters forced to pull people from their cars as water quickly trapped them. Six inches of rain in just a few hours forced Laurel officials to evacuate several hundred people and opened the Patuxent River Dam gates. One person died. Damaging winds across the northeast mangled power lines and have left 100,000 people without power. This tree was no match for the punishing winds. You can see it is completely upended. Trees crashed into houses in Connecticut. It was loud. When it hit the house and broke the glass, it was pretty loud. Police cruisers crushed. This is the same picture we see. All Today, the view from above the incredible tornado damage in Adairsville, Georgia. Buildings completely ripped from their foundations. Survivors surrounded by mounds of debris. The top of the town's steel water torn open like a sardine can. It all happened in maybe five seconds. I mean, it was just boom. On the ground, assessing the strength of the tornado, the National Weather Service's Keith Steelman. This structure alone, if we just go middle of the road, would be in the EF3 range. And so uh, what we'll do is look at others and, and come up with a final rating. And here in Adairsville, Georgia tonight, initial estimates point to a tornado tracking some 24 and a half miles with winds in excess of 160, all causing damage estimated at around $75 million. Brian? We had a wild night in these parts as well. Julie Martin in Georgia for us. Julie, thanks.